think I become a better driver, more complete driver. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, yeah, I have a serious accident, uh, which unfortunately uh, put me out from uh, racing for two years, put me out uh, uh, from F1. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had, uh, hope, yeah, fortunately, I, I did come back to the sport, uh, to driving, and uh, yeah, I chose rally, uh, WRC events uh, mainly, but uh, last year I did some also ERC events. Uh, just to learn the sport, just to discover the sport deeper into the details, and uh, because rally is uh, is my passion, uh, I was very keen to have opportunity to do the season. So, is this still fun, and is this still learning? Ah, uh, yeah, for sure, learning. Uh, yes, because uh, in the end, uh, uh, rally is very, very complex sport, and uh, when you are doing circuits for many years, uh, you gain experience, yes, but uh, the experience I can use from circuit on rallies are, is very little. Uh, so I have to practically learn uh, everything from scratch. I have, uh, before uh, last year on March, I have never been on the on the gravel road, so I never really drove a rally car on gravel. Uh, my first event was uh, Portugal last year. Oh, well, it was my first gravel event, so... Uh, you know, I, I went to Portugal as, I think, one of the hardest uh, rally uh, of the season uh, with only 300 kilometers experience on gravel. I had never drove a uh, rally car on gravel uh, before uh, March of last year. Uh, so just the test before uh, uh, this event. So, yeah, you know, there is many things to learn and uh, uh, the sport is completely different to, to what I was doing before for many years. So. Uh, there is a lot to learn, a lot to discover, and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, challenges. But what about this season, Robert? And you're going to start this one in Monte Carlo, where even the world champion and the experienced drivers say they don't know what they're going to find up there. Yeah, so you can imagine exactly <laughs> in which position I am. You know, if if you have experienced drivers and they don't know exactly uh, how the condition will be, and because nobody can predict really, okay, you can get uh, precise weather focus, you can have precise. Uh, uh, information from uh, from ice crew, from uh, uh, people who are on the stages, but uh, once you arrive there, you never know what you will get. And uh, for sure, my lack of experience doesn't help. It doesn't give me a lot of confidence. And so, but I have to use this rally as a as a learning process, as a gaining experience. And uh, actually, I think first five six events will be like this. There will be all new events uh, for. For me, I did uh, last year eight rallies, uh, eight WRC events, but the initial uh, events uh, I didn't do them. So uh, uh, Monte Carlo, Mexico, Sweden will be first time on snow. Uh, okay, I have driven for fun in my uh, in my rally car in Poland in snow, but many years ago. So they have nothing to do with WRC car and uh, on, in Sweden. Are you a confidence? Are you a confidence driver? To drive well, do you need to be confident? I think confident. I think when you need to find uh, find the last bit and when you need to really fight against top drivers, uh, confidence is fundamental. Uh, you need to be confident. You need to uh, have as many things as you do under control as possible. Uh, so uh, you know when you are starting the stage and you are first time going through them, you don't know if the, your pace notes are perfect. You don't know what grip level the surface will give you, you don't know where people will cut or you can expect, you can imagine where the cut will cut but you don't know how much dust there will be on the road, uh, you don't know if the jump will launch your car and how long and uh, how effect, uh, how big effect will, will have on your balance so there is many many things where it's not not being confident, it's just not knowing them and uh, that's the biggest difference. They say here apparently Jim Clark, the Formula One racing driver and rally driver used to say don't break late break less yeah, yeah. is that you <laughs> i think in many places you have to you have to really take a lot of margin because of condition because of uh, of the condition can change very quickly you know you can get into the shadow place where there is a river coming across the road and it will be icy and uh, uh, so you have to really, I think, uh, take a lot of margin and uh, if you want to finish this rally and this is my priority and uh, it will not be easy already finishing it. So uh, this is, re we really have to take care of what we are doing and uh, take it really steady. And tell me about the year ahead, 2014. How did this opportunity come about? Well, uh, I have uh, 
I have pretty good season last year. Uh, I was not expecting to win WRC2, so the normal step forward would be to step up into WRC. Uh, I have, to be honest, great opportunity, and uh, uh, yeah, I want to thank Citroen as well for the uh, opportunity they gave me last year, and uh, actually they wanted me to drive for the factory car in factory team. Uh, but uh, I have on the other hand also my main partner Lotus, which helped me a lot last year. Without them, I will not be here. And uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, let's say sponsor, uh, uh, not, not clash, but you know, they are, everybody is looking for their own, uh, uh, not business, publicity. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it was normal that uh, Total and Lotus will not really go uh, well together. And uh, I, I felt like I have to, I have to uh, continue with them. I wanted to continue with Lotus, so uh, I'm not saying that this opportunity is the worst one. But uh, it was, you know, it would be nice. I think it would be something special to, after six, seven months of rallying, being in the factory car with the Citroen, which is, you know, many, many world titles uh, have. And uh, so, you know, but uh, I think uh, you have to do step by step, and uh, uh, you know, already the step for move of this year moving to WRC, doing all season uh, with some new events uh, against the best drivers on the world, it's a big step. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you, I, I'm very happy, to be honest, uh, that I have this opportunity. How big a step is it from a WRC2 Citroen to a WRC car? Can you tell us in, in simple terms, speed kit over well, a kilometre? Uh, uh, it's difficult to, to judge the, the gaps. Uh, I have a roughly idea, but uh, you know it depends a lot on the stages, and uh, there is definitely a big uh, difference. Although you know uh, there is no a lot of parts which are different. There is only rear wing difference. Uh, okay, turbo restrictor, uh, not turbo actually. The restrictor uh, is uh, bigger in WRC, which gives you quite a lot of more power. Uh, when you have more power, especially on gravel, the cars are more drivable because you it's easier to control them. Uh, and a part of this, there are only two, three things like smaller brakes in our C car. So there is no huge difference, but definitely when you are on the stage, you feel it. And uh, uh, so you have to somehow adapt as well. Okay, I, this year is a bit different to compare because I'm running Fiesta and last year I was driving the DS3. So it's also different constructions, different uh, way of, of, of uh, let's say, building the car and uh, you know there are different I think technical uh, directions of how the car behaves and uh, uh, what they suit better which condition but uh, definitely Fiesta gives quite a lot of confidence uh, and uh, for me it's just too early to say you know into the details what's exactly the difference. But what was what was the change like was it a, a wow moment? Uh, <laughs> when you are <laughs> When you have been driving 780 horsepower F1 car which weighs 600 kilos, <laughs> when you get into the rally car which weighs uh, 1400 uh, with, uh, and you have extra 50, 60 horsepower, you say, okay, you feel it, but it's not wow and it's not something, oh, now, uh, you know, I'm scared. It's, it's just, I think, it's in some, some way for sure, for driving is easier, uh, just poorly driving. for. Driving fast, I think it's more difficult WRC because things are happening quicker and those cars are very fast in the corner, so you have to really believe on your pace notes and you have to be really precise. And Robert, what are you going to be like on ice and the worst thing, the slush? Ah, well, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, we I did a Yana rally uh, two weeks ago, uh, which I think was a great opportunity for me to get a feeling in different conditions. We didn't have a lot of ice there. Uh, we did a test uh, last week, uh, but it was uh, dry, 12 degrees temperature, and actually it was not uh, uh, not really Monte Carlo preparation, but uh, it will be something to discover. To be honest, I haven't driven on snow, on, on really icy condition, and uh, yeah, it will be definitely a big challenge uh, this rally. Robert is a very brave guy, a very persistent guy, and a big fan, big enthusiast for our sport of rallying. And imagine what a learning curve he has got in 2014. He's going to do the whole year in conjunction with Malcolm Wilson and M Sport. And the learning curve, not just here in Monte Carlo, but throughout the whole season, all of those new events, 
or those new stages or those new surfaces which he hasn't done before and it's going to be good fun following him uh, and it does look as well as if he might just have done enough to earn himself the third place on the podium at the end of day one in Monte Carlo because it looks like it's Brian Bouffier who leads Chris Meek in second place and Robert Kubica <coughs> excuse me who should inherit Danny Sordo's place as who as you will have been seeing from the website uh, failed to get his uh, Hyundai to start between stages four and five.